Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. I am Amanda, Amanda Van Up Knoll, your host of Activist Hour, and this is paid for and authorized by 92 County Strategies. We are a political action committee. We are nonpartisan, and we are dedicated through progress to progress through civic education and trying to bridge the gap that exists in between citizens and the knowledge they need to run for office and do it for free and for everyone and answer any question we can. So if you have questions, don't forget to contact us. You can do that through our website at in92.org, or you can find us on Facebook at 92 County Strategy, or you can contact us on Twitter at in92counties. Thank you for joining us tonight. We are gonna have a great presentation for you. We are joined by our guest panelist is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it wrong. Can you say it for me? Jama Brown. Jama, okay. <laughs> I almost asked you to email a phonetic pronunciation of that today. And that's <laughs> so totally we have Jama okay. Brown with us. <laughs> we have Jama Brown with us tonight. And she is, the reason I have her with us tonight, she is the president of the North Central Indiana League of Women Voters, which is a nonpartisan organization dedicated to advancing issues, voting rights, ending gerrymandering, and several other things that are near and dear to our heart here at 92 County Strategy. She is also the secretary of Kosciuszko County Democratic Party, and she is also a precinct committee member, which we know here, in our opinion, is one of the most important jobs in politics. So. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we are going to go over online paper and voter registration options. There is a big voter registration drive coming up on September 23rd, I think it is, so we want to make sure everybody has the information to go ahead and be able to do that. Now, Jema, thank you for joining us tonight. I just so appreciate you taking the time to do this with us. We, we really want to get this kind of information out to people, and we're just so grateful for having you. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm really excited. I've been excited all day. It's been kind of comical um, because, you know, I identify with a lot of things that 92 County Strategy is trying to do, and I wholeheartedly agree that grassroots and local government is where real personal effective change happens. And one of the most central pieces to that whole argument is voters and voter registration is something that you know is a hurdle we need to to discuss and talk about how easy it can be and the things that we need to do to make sure that everybody's you know um, compliant and following regulations and find out that it's really not that scary so i'm excited okay well, I completely agree with all of that. So before we get started, one of the things that 92 County strives to do is get our listeners to understand that the people that do this, Jema, myself, all the other people we've had on the show, these are just normal, everyday people that felt a passion, felt a drive to do this because it matters to them. And we have lives outside of this, and it's hard to balance sometimes. So we would like to know a little bit about your personal life. If you could tell us, like, what do you do outside of uh, the League of Women Voters and your commitment to the party politics? Sure. Um, you know, it's really funny that you you bring that up because um, my dad was one of the few um, Democrats um, elected year over year for 23 years in my county. Um, my county is very heavily GOP. Um, so I campaigned with my dad for years and years and years. Um, I never, you know, I was voted since I, you know, was 18, did all of the right things, but I never really felt, you know, impassioned by it until, um, um, you know, the results of the 2016 election and where I felt, you know, I maybe could have done more and didn't. And when the issue of, you know, Medicare and how Medicaid and Medicare might be cut, um, I have a very dear friend of mine, Amy, who has a young son who has special needs and, um, I got extremely involved right away because of Amy and through her, her, my friendship with her and her young son B, um, I felt impassioned to do what I could. I went to my first meeting um, that I had really gone to in a long, long time. Um, I knew the chair. He knew my father for years and years and the previous chair did. Um, and um, Nobody really ran for secretary. <laughs> um, we had a fabulous secretary before, um, Lindsay Malay. She was absolutely wonderful. Her records are impeccable. Um, and I just, you know, told her that um, I would be willing to do it. So I 
so my 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 feet in um, outside of that i'm a single mom to two teenage boys who are um you know wonderful kids i'm ridiculously lucky with them i'm in um, it sales right now and my territory is everything north of indy so i'm a busy busy person um but other than that you know it's it's been really a personal journey it's been a journey where um you know i take to heart like I said, grassroots involvement, um, making sure that people are aware that, you know, they can make a difference, just like you said, of everyday people. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That people just have to understand that. So one of, like, like you said, and I agree, the most important thing, it, it comes to voters. That's really where it all starts. And a lot of people need to get out there and knock on doors and register voters and hold voter registration events. And so coming up, we have this huge voter registration drive coming up towards the end of the month. And there are a couple of different ways to register voters. And there are also some responsibilities to registering voters. So that's what we're going to go over tonight. And we're really excited. So thank you for joining us. And we're about to get started. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so some of the things that I wanted to go over tonight, and basically what I'm going to do, this is going to be a pretty quick session tonight. I don't think it's going to take the whole hour, but I do want to talk some about some other things that are going on that have to do with voting at the end if we have time. So hopefully okay. we can rock this out pretty quick. So the things that we're going to go over tonight is who can vote, when can you register voters, because there are cutoff dates. If you want to vote in the primary election, you have to be registered by April 9th of 2017, or I'm sorry, 2018. Oh, that's such a typo. <laughs> April 9th of 2018. And then the general election cutoff is going to be October 9th of 2018. And then you tonight, we're also going to talk about how you can register voters, and we'll go over the different paper forms and the online system. And then there are a couple of important reminders that you need to know when it comes to registering voters to make sure you're on the up and up. So I think that's going to cover it. Now, a lot of people, so these are the basics. If you're looking at the screen on, with us right now, we're going over who can vote in Indiana. So you have the right to vote in Indiana if you are a US citizen and a resident of Indiana. You are also 18 years of old, before, 18 years old, on or before the next general election. So this is really fun because some kids, their first election, they can actually vote in the primary when they're 17, as long yeah. as they'll be 18 by the general. I was one of those kids. My son will be one of those kids too. I'm really excited. I am. I I'm more excited about him doing that than I am about his license. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful because it's it's just such a neat thing because it makes you a little bit different. And I think it kind of tunes you to what goes on a little bit more. I think you're automatically like, oh, it's a special situation that just applies to me. How many right. more of these special situations can there be? <laughs> so let's see. Oh, so one another thing that's really important to remind people is that Indiana does not have a felony restriction. Do you know how many people, how many people do you think you come across that don't know that? You know, that's a really great question. Um, until I got super involved, I personally didn't. I didn't know that. Um, I I thought that, you know, as long as you were, um, you know, had some kind of issue, you couldn't vote. I thought it was, you know, because uh, there's a lot. I want to say, I the last time that I looked at that statistic, it was like 37 states. There's a ton of states that have that restriction, and Indiana isn't, mm -hmm. um, which is fantastic because I think that there's nothing more significant in robbing someone's you know, identity of their personal responsibility in the government that they choose than being able to vote. And when that is a, a situation where whatever things have gone your way in your life and you're take, you, you know, that's taken from you, it's a very personal thing. So I think that that's, you know, kudos to Indiana for that. Right. It's, it's one of the, I always say it's one of the few things that they're doing progressively correct. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, so we, so it, that so that's so it's kind of nice. So even if you have a felony, if you are a convicted felon, if, if, if as long as you serve your time and you're out, you can vote. Now you can't vote if you are incarcerated, unfortunately. But as long as you're not actually in prison, you can vote. So that's something we have to get out. I worked a booth 
at the fair last year in the fall. And I actually had that on a big dry erase board because people just didn't know. That's a really great idea. That's a really great idea. It's these tiny little small things. I know um, Kentucky just mm-hmm. had a huge contentious issue with this and they're a neighbor to the south and um you know when our neighbors around us start doing things our our government starts getting ideas and i think that this is something that you know indiana really should be proud of doing oh absolutely it's it's definitely something that i wish people would take more advantage of especially where i live so i'm in dearborn county and if anybody paid attention to the new york times last september there was an article talking about my county And our county has a higher incarceration rate than San Francisco and Durham, North Carolina combined. And we only have a population of 50,000 people. And we have almost no actual crime. We have no violent crime. It's all mostly drug crime. And so then the city went and did it. Oh, yeah. And the city went and, well, and possession. Mm. That's a whole other webinar. A money maker here. (laughs) Oh, I can't even yeah, imagine. Yeah, that's a that's a money maker here. They added a two hundred and something bed prison just to just to almost pretty much solely is going to end up housing drug crime. So instead of building a rehab center, which is what we really needed, but that's a whole nother story. That's another reason <laughs> you need to get involved and run for local office. That's right. So be on the area planning where no. you can say no. That's not what we want. We want to build, you know, a, a rehab center. We don't want another for profit prison. <laughs> exactly. So, and then, so as far, and then, so continuing on who can vote in Indiana. So you have to have lived in the precinct where you vote for at least 30 days prior to the election. So as long as you've lived there for at least a month, you can vote there. Now there are special circumstances where you can go vote at your old precinct one time. If you didn't update your address and things like that, you have to look at your specific area to find out what your rules are. So just call your county clerk if you have any questions about that. And then, of course, you have to be registered to vote. So that's what yeah. we're going to talk about tonight. Yeah, that's one thing that a lot of women who, um, um, you know, might be getting married and then changing their name in between, like if they get married in, like next year's a great example, spring weddings, right? If you get married mm-hmm. after the primary and your name changes, but it's still in the old precinct and you've moved, you probably mm-hmm. have to go vote in the old precinct. So some of those things that are minuscule, that are out of, you know, very outdated in my opinion, <laughs> or if mm-hmm. you've just, you know, mm-hmm. added a myriad of paperwork you have to do when you change your name. Um, those are the little things that we need to remind people too when we're signing up saying, hey, if you're registered and you're confirmed registered and you haven't been part of a purge, you know, make sure that you're, you know, which precinct because you might need to change it. So. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm the kind of person I encourage people to, regi- to, to update their registration twice a year. No matter what they do in life, if they move or don't move, change anything or don't change anything, just do it twice a year. It takes two minutes and and you're done and you know it's always done. Right. So, okay. So yeah. we are going to go, now we're going to go over the ways you can register someone to vote. So we're going to go over four different ways you can register someone to vote tonight. And one of them is the online registration and we're going to go over that after our paper forms and so the paper forms the reason there's four ways is because there's actually three different paper forms you can use a lot of people don't know that yeah and the other thing is in indiana which is also kind of progressive um any one of those forms will allow you to vote if your information is updated and correct so um if if you use your county form to vote in the general election that happens to have state um, offices that you're voting for, that county far, form will work for that. Um, if you go big and you do federal, some the reason that there's options is because some states require you to have only the federal. They don't have you know county forms. Some of them require you to do both federal and state. And in Indiana doesn't. So. Oh wow! I didn't realize that there were states that required multiple. Um, in, um, and I'm going to mess it up. It's either Maine or Massachusetts, one of the two. Um, you have to be registered federally and then for your, st- because their, their elections, they don't have an open primary like Indiana does. They have to have, you know, a state form too, so that you can do both local and state or local, um, state and federal elections. Um, and, and it, they get a card that tells them with little icons on there that says they're registered at both the federal and the state level. So. Wonderful. That is, I mean, that is awful that they have to go through all of that. But I mean, 
I guess if you get the little card and everything, you at least know you have it. Nobody can take it away from you. Right. Okay. So the first thing we're going to go over is the state form. So if you're searching for the state form and you want to print something out on your own, you can go to Indiana. You can just Google search Indiana VRG-7 registration, and it will pull up this form. So I, I didn't keep the instructions on the top because it's pretty self-explanatory. You just mm -hmm. enter in, you know, you enter your address and everything like that. And then make sure you sign it at the bottom. And you have to make sure that this matches your driver's license. It's, it's really important that this matches your driver's license. So if you ever update your driver's license, update this. If you ever change this, change your driver's license. Just consider them attached to each other. So, and actually the League of Women Voters that now, Jamie, they have something kind of neat they're trying to do right now, like with your driver's license and registration, right? Absolutely. Now in, um, in Indiana, in the course of being an adult, um, you encounter the BMV probably more than like a lot of us like, right? But, um, right. you know, what we're trying to do is we're putting legislation forth this year where, um, we're encouraging the BMV to make it a, a law where every time they speak with someone, not just when they're doing what's called a um, credentialed visit, which is where you're updating your driver's license or getting your state ID for the first time. Every time you renew your license plates, every time you, you know, um, do a driver's test or, every, you know, anytime you interact with them, they're asking you, are you registered to vote? If not, let's do that now. Um, right now, they don't have to. Right now, all they really have to do is when you're, you're doing, like I said, a credential visit. And the reason that that's really important is because in Indiana, you only have to renew your license every so many years. And, you know, not everybody registers to vote the first time around. They may not become, you know, they may not feel it's something that's very important. But the League of Women Voters says that the more the more times that you have the conversation of if you're registered to vote and we have, you know, off election years like 2018 is not going to be a presidential election year. It's a midterm year. But, you know, we're going to have an election year coming up and they may see, you know, 2016 was a big year. I become more politically active. Now I want to register to vote. So all those conversations keep it top of mind and they're more likely to vote the more they have the conversation. So that's something that we're really looking forward to. We have, um, bipartisan support. So that's really important too, um, to show how important it is to vote in Indiana, regardless of where you fall on the spectrum. Oh, absolutely. I'm all about the more voices, the better. The more educated voters we have, the absolute better the outcome. Right. So uh, now one thing I do want to point out about this form is I, I just don't, I don't want to forget is this, if you'll notice on the left of the screen, it has the information if you are actually holding a voter registration form say you hold an event and you register voters at the event or you go clipboard a fair or something or a parade you actually have to sign this and put your address on it your physical address and you or you have to print your name and then you have to put the day that you got the voter registration form because you actually have to turn it in within 10 days so yes, that's it's great. really important. <laughs> right. That's a great point because um, sometimes, and this is also something that's not really widely known, um, in, in Indiana, we do have an aging population and there's a lot of um, push for people who are in, you know, assisted living homes and retirement homes and nursing homes, et cetera, um, where there's a big voter registration push for people who aren't registered. And those people who mm -hmm. go in and register those people, they do have to turn them in with a certain amount of time. Um, part of that is because they don't want, you know, everyone to turn them in at, you know, March 29th of 2018, right before the first part of the primary, you know, registrations are due, um, you know, to give the clerks a little bit of time to get everything put in. The other part of it is to kind of keep everybody honest and on the up and up. They don't want to see a bunch of repeated forms, and it's a little hard to check the veracity of some of them, you know, when there's a big paper dump. So I think it's a good right. rule. Um, but it is a rule that not everybody knows about, so it's important. So if you go out and you're involved in your League of Women Voter Party um, um, registration drive, if you're involved in the 92 county registration drive, your Republican registration drive, Democrat, whatever it is, make sure that you remember that because you got to turn them in right away. Right. That is that is actual law. That isn't something that a party said. That isn't <laughs> right. something that a group said needed to happen. That's law. 
that one's important. You need to pay attention to that one. Right. And the other oh. thing that we want to remind people is if you're doing the state form, which the state form, I can download 900 of these suckers and I can keep them all year. But as long as, you know, I sign date them and turn them into 10 days, they don't care. The one thing that you want to double check and it's not that big of a deal, but it does make things easier is some places like um, I think it's uh, I think Carroll County um, and I think Porter County. I think there's a couple of counties that actually have um, voter registration offices separate from the clerk's office. Like Kosciuszko County, oh. everything's handled through the clerk's office. So you need to make sure that when you take it, you're not running all over town. Or if you want to mail it in, you don't send it to the clerk's office because the clerk's office, if they have a registration office, they're not they're not so quick about turning it around and you might mm -hmm. actually miss that 10 day window. I recommend taking them in per, on, you know, in purpose or in person and, you know, showing them and handing them over. But if you have to mail them, double check and make sure that you don't have to send them to the registration office. You have to send them to the County clerk. Oh, that's a really good thing to point out. I didn't realize that. See, we have, we have just a County clerk here. So I didn't realize there were separate voter registration office, but if there are counties that are getting so much voter registration, they need their own office. I am all for that. Absolutely. And the cool thing about the registration offices in those counties, um, those counties aren't necessarily really big on population, um, but they do have very active turnout. And you'll notice, um, because I'm a big nerd, like we talked about before, um, <laughs> if you look at the counties that do have a registration office, they have higher voter turnout or higher than average. Um, a couple of years ago, Indy had a, had a really dismal turnout and they still did about average. So, you know, there's there's something to be said for, you know, your local government that's only, you know, concern is voter registration. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I think having a dedicated office and a de dedicated amount of staff that their only job is to interact with voters. I think that's that's a really good thing. I wish that we had that all over because that really gives credence to how important it is rather than it just being this thing that pops up in an in like an unused office somewhere every couple of years right absolutely and, it, and like you just said it's it's it legitimizes the whole personification of that vote is singularly important to the democracy of the republic right it it is the cornerstone it is the you know the thing that makes us who we are and i agree it, it really does shine a light on how important voting voting and voting registration is absolutely all right well so i think we've gone over the state form enough if anybody has any questions about anything we're going over tonight you can always drop it in the chat box online or you can email us at 92counties at gmail.com and we'll get an answer back to you as quickly as we can. So moving on now, we're going to the county form, which if you look at it, it is exactly the same bottom portion of the form. The only <laughs> thing different, this is a VRG 11, so it has a different number and there'll be a few things different on the top of the form, but it, it's all the same information down to even the applicant's receipt acknowledgement and the acceptance receipt acknowledgement. It, it, it's literally the same. But again, this one also has the 10 day limit. So you have to make sure, you know, don't drop one underneath of your seat in your car or something like that. You, it has to be turned in within 10 days. Right. Good point. So, okay, so now this is the federal form I broke into two parts so I could blow it up and you could see it a little bit better. Now, if you'll notice on this form, it's a lot more easy to look at. Mm -hmm. It is less overwhelming. It is more legible. The, the <laughs> not just like the, it, the way the boxes are laid out. It's just more legible. It makes more sense. So I right. like the federal form. I, I encourage people to use the federal form. And there, there also is a bonus to the federal form. There is no limit on the federal form. You don't have to put your address on the bottom of it. So you're not turning in, you're, you're not showing everybody you go in contact with your personal private address. And there's no time limit on to get these turned in. Now you always wanna turn them in in a timely fashion. But right. at the same time, you know, if you do a voter registration and then you go out of town for a week and a half, 
and you come back and you find a couple of forms that you missed, you know, you won't get in trouble and no one's voter registration will be invalidated. So always better to use the federal form in my personal opinion. What do you, what do you guys do? Do you, do you stand by the federal form or do you go more for the, for the local forms? How do you, how does the League of Women Voters look at the federal form? Um, well, it, that's a really good question because um, nationally blanket across the organization, we kind of prefer the federal form. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, number one, um, the federal form, as you can see in this slide, it allows you to physically denote where your house is because um, not everybody has, you know, mail delivery. There has been, you know, rural mail, mail carriers that have, you know, kind of been their, their territories have been shrunk, so they all have post office boxes. Or I, you know, I live on one of those roads. Right. So I do not have a mailbox. I have to go exactly. to the post office. Right. So th that's one of the reasons why we really prefer um, the federal form. The other really cool thing about the federal form is, like you mentioned, it's really easy to lay out. It's really easy, you know, um, to find. But the other cool thing is, is, um, it already folds up when you print it off. You can fold it all up, push it together. If you get the ones that come straight from, you know, the federal government, from the actual mm -hmm. um, office of, you know, voter registration, to mail it in. So all you got to do is fold it up, slap a stamp on it, and put the address on there. So that's another reason why we really like it. Um, oh, I've only I've only done the home print. But that's good to know. I may have to start looking into that. <laughs> right, because when you're out doing a, a voter registration drive, things like that, where you can just fold them up and, and you know and send them away, they're they're really really awesome. The other cool thing is, um, the 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 ethnic group, you know, when it asks for your state or you know or asks for your um, your race or anything, Indiana does not require for that. Um, that's not something that's on the the state registration vote that's required for you to answer. Um, the other cool thing is, um, you know, because it gives you that option, though, um, people are able to track demographics on how they vote more. So we don't necessarily tell them that you don't have to um, put it in. We just let them fill out what they want. If they ask, we tell them. But um, tracking how voter patterns happen is very, very important because it tells us what's important to certain groups in our country, how they're voting and what issues they're voting on. And that's a whole other, you know, situation. But yeah, we really prefer the right. federal form. It gives, um, you know, it breaks it all down really easy. The other cool thing, like I said, is you can fold it up and mail it right in. That's, I, I, yeah, I really like, I like the fact you can just fold it like that. Now, can you, now, do you have to mail this in or can you, so you can't take this to your clerk's office? Um, you, you, no, you don't have to mail it in. You can't take it in. Um, because like I said okay. before, Indiana, yeah, you can accept the federal or the state. Um, if you do, okay. use I just wanted to one, make sure I thought you could, but I just, you know. Right. And, and that's one of the reasons probably why the 10 day thing isn't there because that mail may date more than. 10 days to get there if you don't use first class. So, um, but yeah, it's great. There's no time limit. There's, you know, less information that's required. Um, but the most important thing is it actually gives you a place to physically mark your address. And that's a big deal. Yeah, that is. I mean, you can't get to my, I mean, GPS won't find my house. I have to take a picture <laughs> of Google Maps and then draw lines on it <laughs> to get people and send screenshots to people. That's how I get people to my house. Right. You're still in the part of Indiana where it's like, hey, where old man Johnson's barn was 20 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if anybody has any questions, again, we do try to stop often for questions. So if you want to drop them in the chat, please feel free to do that. We'd be happy to answer them for you. And if you're watching this after the fact from our website, please remember just email us 92counties at gmail.com. So now we're going to go over Indiana is the most, in my opinion, fantastic piece of software they ever decided to give to us. <laughs> and I would like everyone right now who has a smartphone to take your smartphone out and please download this right now. Um, it is so easy to use. It is so great to have as a tool to talk to anybody where you work, any civic organizations that you're that you're involved in, any nonprofits that you work with, anybody that you volunteer with, your church, anybody. Take it out, download it right now. It's free. Um, it's so easy to use. It's it's again probably the the, the other most progressive thing we've done. <laughs> 
Absolutely. And uh, so every time you go, to, well, me, because I don't ever check the box because <laughs> I just, right. I, I, and, and I'll explain why in a minute, but I don't ever check the box. So when <laughs> I go, you can, you, it'll pop up and it'll say the literally, when you go to this website, I screenshotted every single yep. screen. So we are going through <laughs> this step by step tonight. We are going to kiss this goodbye. We are going to keep it simple, stupid. Right. So we have the, so you have the app, you get on it. And the very first thing you have is the get app. Now, the reason I, I personally don't, so I don't have the app on my phone, <gasps> but I do that on purpose. I do it on purpose and I want to explain why. So I go and I knock on doors a lot and I do a lot of local events. Now I haven't this year. I've done some other things in my local community, but up until this year, I was doing that pretty regularly. And I have I would go and what I would do is I would, if I had the app, people were less likely to interact with it with me. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I went to the website and I, I just like Google searched it and I went to the website and they, they saw it came up where you could get an app. Cause you know, like when you have an app, normally you have your, your, your information's downloaded into it and it like saves yep. stuff, you know? And so people are really concerned with their privacy these days. So I, I actually go to the website each time and people seem to respond to it a little bit better, but I have used this, uh, I have used this website. I, I, I go, when I was doing, I did voter protection and mm. um, poll watching last year. And so I actually went around and I went to all the different places and I can't even, I don't even know how many times I did the information lookup for other people to find out where their address was. Cause we have those, those old country roads where, you know, you might have lived a stone to throw away from this person forever, but you go vote in a different place, you know, right, the exactly. lines are cut funny because mm -hmm. gerrymandering, that's a whole nother <laughs> that we'll get to. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> so when you go, so you go to it and now I, now I just went through the actual voter registration portion. Can you tell us other than voter registration, what other information can people get on here? Sure. Um, something that a lot, a lot of folks may know right now um, is we had a quote unquote purge of voters and what this, what this, um, purge was, was updating documentation, updating voters, um, making sure that they were a still alive, which actually come to find out was a real problem. Um, not maybe as overwhelming as maybe we were told, but it was a problem. Um, we did have, um, Indiana is very famous for homesteading voting, which is another situation um, where, you know, we've got some folks who live here part-time and they live in Florida part-time and they use their address in Indiana for their tax purposes, but they vote in Florida. And, um, you know, they wanted to make sure that that information was updated. So they did get rid of a lot of information, um, a lot of registered voters. Um, so one of the things that you can do is you can, <laughs> you can update your voter registration. So if like, right now is a really great time to have this conversation because of the devastation that we've just seen in Florida with Hurricane Irma. You may need to legitimately change your physical address before you vote. Um, so mm -hmm. you can update that information. The other thing you can do, obviously, other than register to vote is you can confirm that you have been registered to vote, that you weren't part of the purge. There are some people who, and I'm talking like actual precinct committee members of both parties, that were purged in certain parts of the state, um, you know, in an error. And those are things wow. where, right, yeah, so it's really important that you, A, number one, update your voter registration information, make sure that your address is correct, things like your phone number. Some people register with their cell phone numbers, um, and those things change, and, you know, guilty here, you know, I didn't update my cell phone registration information um, the last time around, right before, um, and, you know, they said, oh, you got to do this, and I, and I did it. So you can confirm your registration is good. But the other really cool things are, like you said, information lookup, find your address because like here in Syracuse and in, in Cazaso County where I'm at, where we vote, our precincts all changed last election cycle. We went from, you know, certain districts in the in the town voting at this church. Some of them voted over at this daycare center, you know, we combine them all and now we all vote in the community center all at once and they have lines and every district's mapped out and everything's good. So that's really key. And then election information, um, 
is available. It tells you sometimes like the dates and time, you know, when your when your registration or when your voters um, mm -hmm. elections are. Um, it tells you sometimes the people who are on the ballot. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> Sometimes it's now, not. I always... just said it was a progressive piece of software. I didn't say it was a perfect progressive piece of software. <laughs> exactly. And part of that problem really isn't really a problem. It's actually a good problem to have, right? The reason that it wasn't necessarily so accurate in our primary in 2016 is because we had people register as candidates last minute before they got updated in the information. So that was really cool. It's a good problem to have, but it did kind of show, a maybe we should update this more often. Um, but there's so much that you can do on there. The really cool, like, but like I said, the big two things today are update your voter registration, and confirm your registration. When you update it, it'll tell you a checkbox and it'll send you a little message saying you're confirmed, your registration is updated. But those are really big important things. If you're doing a voter registration drive, say, hey, are you registered to vote? And they say, yeah, I am, no big deal. Say, okay, have you confirmed it because we had a purge? Now, the reason that you wanna do that is because like I mentioned, peer praising committee members were purged and you know that those folks are up to date on their stuff most of the time. So yeah, right. really, really great information. Okay, well, so, so you can get a lot of different kind of information here, not just register people to vote. You can answer questions and, and, and do, do a little bit of research anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. So, this, so the statewide voter registration system, um, when you get into it, you're going you're gonna to click on voter registration. And then I, I just went through it like I had never voted, registered to vote before, and it let me. So that's what we did today. So you click on register to vote and then it has an eligibility questionnaire. It tells you all the things that we talked about, how you have to be 18, not be in prison, where you live, all of that kind of stuff to tell you whether or not, okay, these are the things you have to be able to do to be eligible. And then it gives you the option, all the different options to register to vote and you have to accept the terms of use. So, because you're using a governmental system and you're passing private information and things like that, you, you have to accept the terms of use. And then it's really simple. It's just four questions. It's, it's not a lot at all. Right. And, and because it's mobile and um, thanks to, you know, um, you know, mobile data and devices everywhere, um, taking an iPad, like you mentioned, that just brings mm -hmm. up the website on its own, not necessarily the app. Um, might give a little bit more comfort. The, the fact that we have mobile online registration with literally a few questions and then they take mm -hmm. your digital signature that you have on register with the DMV as your actual signature, you don't even have to have a place to sign it. Um, mm -hmm. the, the fact that they do all of that and it's literally five or six clicks, again, like you said, is the probably the most progressive thing we've done and it's really, really important because um, you can explain this to some folks, you know, you know, a lot of people might be intimidated by technology. You can say, look, it, I'm going to read everything to you. And the fact that I am confident enough, I can read it to you tells you how easy it is. So I'm going to read, you know, you're a citizen, you're 18, you're not in jail and you live where you're voting. Is that all true? Let's go get you registered. Um, because right. we got, you know, this is so important. So, so important for people to know. Absolutely. Okay, so, so you answer, so if you're gonna register a voter, if they answer correctly to all these questions, you go to the next step, and here you start your actual voter registration. So you'll choose whether or not it's a new registration, a name change, or an address change. So you'll click it, and I just put it new registration, you know, and then I'll stick my name in there. For whatever reason, it it decided it wanted to maybe make it bell. So that's a little thing. <laughs> and then, you know, you go to the very next step, and it's going to ask you for your date of birth. Now, I have to throw a little bit of a gripe in here as a progressive that it is only a two gender op option. There's male and female only. I do wish there was like other options, or that you or, could enter your own option. Just make right, it a more that we don't. Right, or that, you know, maybe necessarily not worry so much about gender for online registration. You yeah, know, just leave I mean, it off. Treat, right, it like, exactly. treat it like the felony thing. Just just get rid of it. Right, because if you, you know, you verify your age, your address, and you're not in jail, 
you're a voter. I don't care what gender you right. are, you're a voter. So, yeah, right. exactly. Oh, well, what is this? There it goes. Okay. So, you, so your date of birth, and then you can put your email in your phone in there. You don't have to. And then you're going to have to put in your address. And I took a screenshot and then entered my address. So, I could get to the <laughs> so, was like, so you'll enter your address. And then it actually wants to know if that, if you're where you live is where you get your mail. So right. me, cause like I said, I have that PO box issue. I actually had mm -hmm. to do these individually, but it has a really easy, you know, check current box. And it even has an international address off option, which is nice for the, the expatriates and the people that we have in, you know, in college and things like that overseas, a friend of mine just took her daughter to go to college in Europe and she's going over there for eight months or something to do a semester and a half or whatever. So it's good that they have this international address option. They really did kind of think of all of that, which is nice. Right. And one of the reasons that we have residence address and mailing address is because you vote where you live, you don't vote where you get your mail. So you may live in, um, mm -hmm. like, let's say you live in Indianapolis, but you're, or you get your mail in Indianapolis because you work downtown, but you really live in Carmel. Um, you vote where your Carmel district tells you. So that's one reason why the two separate address tabs. Absolutely. Okay. And then we have, I'm used to using my mouse. I unplug my mouse and I'm using my finger pad and my finger and my finger pad don't get along. So I apologize if I'm <laughs> clicking around. Um, okay. So then after you get your address and then here's an option where if you are helping someone complete this, if you're actually standing there with them, you're helping them type in the information, you can tap this. And I did not do that. And I kind of wish I would have now. Can you tell them a little bit what happens if you tap this button? I don't know. I've never actually had to do it. Right. I've I've always just kind of handed people my phone. Right. And um, I've only ever done it twice. So I'm a really bad example. But the last two times that I did do it um, is it it also requests your information and it's a little bit like that box that we sign on the state form. Um, okay. Yeah, it's it's not anything really invasive. Um, and the reason that they do that is because um, they don't want you to go out and, and register a bunch of folks who aren't really compliant right. or they don't really say, yeah, I want to register. You're just trying to get bodies and that helps cut down voter fraud. Um, Right. Not a, that, you know, not that that's necessarily a huge problem that we have here in Indiana, thank goodness. Um, but it is something right. that, that, you know, that kind of gives them more of a, you know, an identity as well as a voter saying, yes, I really want you to do this, but I need your help to help me do it. And that's one way right. that we can. Well, and accountability and transparency is something we can always use a little more of. So Absolutely. there's another way to do it. All right. So let's see what we got next. All right. So then. You're almost done. You have your your online voter registration and you have to basically kind of like initial all of these boxes. You're allowing them to do this and that you agree to those four things again, five things again, and that you're not lying and that you can <laughs> go to jail or pay ten thousand dollars or both if right. if you lie about any of this. So right. And then once you click all of that and you click submit, it will give you this wonderful congratulations. You have submitted your online voter registration application and you can get an email and then they'll send you your, your voter registration form to your address. And then it, down here, it actually even tells you, again, the next deadline for registration is 1159 p.m. local time, Tuesday, April 9th, 2018. So, I know there are some people that feel like same day registration should be a thing that we do. I have mixed emotions on it. I, I kind of, I don't know. I've worked in the, in the early voting office and I've been inside of that nightmare. And unless we have some serious like infrastructure support inside of our voter registration offices, I just don't know that the majority of Indiana could handle same day voter registration. Right. Well, there's a couple of things that we have to do. And you, and one of those things is exactly what you said. And um, the other thing that we would have to do is we'd have to increase our poll workers um, to cover yep. something like that, because, you know, that would create an issue, um, not a bad issue, but an issue. But one right. thing that would solve this problem is automatic voter registration at the age of 18. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to slip that in here, right? Re really quick. Um, 
Right, but if we had automatic voter registration where just like, you know, you're, you're filling out your taxes for your first time and you register to vote, this isn't a problem anymore. Um, one thing I do want people to know though, is let's say, um, you know, your, your family is in Florida, they gotta move, they gotta change their address, but they don't get it done before April. Now they, does that, they cannot vote in the primary. However, if they don't come home to Indiana until like May and they register after that, then they can vote for the general. So yes, we right. have deadlines when you can vote in the primary and the general, but you can register all year long. Um, it just depends on right. when that registration hits that you are able to vote in those two deadlines. Um, the other yeah. thing that you wanna double check and tell people if you're signing them up for online voter registration is if they sign up, they submit the information and it goes through, if they don't get a confirmation or um, like the registration information back from you know the um, the office, call yeah. your clerk. Say, hey, I got you know a, you know a couple of people registered. You know we were out at you know um, our local party. We went out in the street. We, we you know we did about twenty five people and only ten got it back. You know um, or hey, I registered to vote and I was supposed to get information. You know call and do that because we do have legitimate deadlines you might miss it even though you're registered so keep an eye on that mail gets lost you know paperwork gets submitted late um things happen so double double check that absolutely absolutely this is this the your voter registration you should treat it like your cell phone make sure you always know where it is it's always in working order and you know what to do if it messes up right that's fantastic that's a great idea it's, it's just keep it simple, stupid, you know, I'm a big advocate. So the last thing we're going to go over tonight is a couple of just important reminders. And I cannot, 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 cannot say this enough. Do not forget the 10 day limit on a state or county form. Do not forget that. And you'll notice at the very bottom of this, it says legal responsibility. I was looking for what happens to you if you don't turn that in or what happens if you don't turn that in. And I could not find it. So do you know what happens? Okay, so that's kind of also another, first of all, it's a gray area. And the reason it's a gray area is because um, the 10 day law has been written and rewritten and revised and amended over decades. Um, it was right. originally written back when mail was primarily the only way we got any information from the state. Um, so in those amendments buried somewhere, there's a fine you can pay. Also in that amendment, which wasn't technically canceled, but is still there, but really isn't anything they follow, um, y you know, you can get a strongly worded letter from your local you know, election board. Um, but really, I don't see anything other than the fine. And I have never heard of anyone being fined for it. I will tell you, mm -hmm. though, after 10 days, they just toss the registration forms. Um, the clerk will look at them. They'll say that's invalid. That's invalid. That's invalid. You know, and they'll just toss them. To me, that's, that's more worse than the fine. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and, and I want to say that the fine may even be null and void now, too, because they may have actually rescinded it. And I haven't followed the law. Yeah, I don't know. I have. I do have the question into the Indiana Election Division. And once I get that, I will publish that on our page or uh, in our Facebook page. So so that information will come. Yeah, that's that's a um, great that's a great thing. Um, I, you know, I do know for a fact though that they will just toss the voter registration. And to me, that's that's the big big problem. There is, you know, it, it takes a lot um, to get people who aren't registered registered. Not necessarily the paperwork mm -hmm. behind it. You know, the mobile app we just saw is really easy to use. It's really friendly. It's not a lot of work. It's getting people convinced that yeah that singular voice is just as strong as a collective voice. And that's the big push behind voter registration. Absolutely. 100%. Now, there is one other thing that is really important that uh, has to be said, and it's regarding inducement. Now, I've put the definition of inducement on here, and it's a thing that persuades or influences someone to do something. Mm -hmm. Now, as of registering voters or working a poll or anything like that, the absolute worst thing you can do, in my opinion, is is commit inducement. Now, could you talk a little bit about that? 
Well, that's that's um, a really good way to talk about a little bit about why the League of Women Voters is so important. Um, the League of Women Voters is nonpartisan. And there's a couple of words that we've heard, particularly lately, and those are partisan, bipartisan, and nonpartisan. Partisan obviously is identified with this party, this is the platform, these are the ideology policies I want to pass. Bipartisan means you work with both sides. Nonpartisan means we don't care if you like the Green Eyed Monster Party. If you're gonna work to work on a platform we've identified as something that's really important, come work with us, right? Right. Because we're nonpartisan, we kind of remove the inducement, um, I guess, um, temptation is the word to put in there, right. maybe. Right. Um, you're, I'm not going out and from spreading information. Exactly. Um, I'm not going out and registering a bunch of people and then telling them, now remember, when you register, I want you to vote Democrat. Or now when you register, I want you to check GOP or look, vote for the R. That's a bad thing. Um, right. you, know, induce, induce, you know, voting people for the sake of boosting your party numbers um, in a way where, um, you know, you're influencing someone because, you know, you, you want to register. And, and it's a very powerful thing when you have... Um, like, for instance, when I, you know, when you use an iPad and you have the state of Indiana seal and you're using something in a political capacity where you're registering someone to vote, it's very easy to say, now remember to vote, you know, Republican in the next primary. It's a very easy thing to do and it influences someone. Whereas if you just take that out and, you know, like the League of Women Voters, we're nonpartisan. We don't, you know, identify with any policy. We're more about getting people to vote there's no pressure there. It's not even a conversation we have. So um, inducement is a big deal. It's also something that I feel personally on every spectrum of political affluence is violated constantly. As <laughs> um, do I. And, and, and I feel it's an important conversation to have because um, there's a lot of power in having a conversation um, about why people should vote and how they should vote. Um, I've seen, you know, going back to the conversation about people who are elderly, they tend to have, you know, um, a certain set of ideals and they tend to vote one way or the other, right? Having right. political parties go in and register them to vote and then, by the way, telling them who to vote for, that blurs the lines. Um, right. I personally believe well, and that then that's also the line. Giving something. <laughs> well, yes. and then also giving something. It's very now we saw last year during a couple of the uh, the elections, there were issues where people were getting charged with electioneering, where there were they were giving people standing in line waiting to vote food and things. And they were mm -hmm. trying to say, well, you're trying to influence them to vote for the candidate you support by giving them this. Right. And, and, you know, what's really funny is the inducement clause came about from, you know, Tammany Hall, which we won't get into the weeds on that. But that's that's a very classic. If you want to find out how down the rabbit hole inducement really can go, look up just how Tammany Hall in, in New York and how those practices came about, because, um, you know, you can have a lot of influence. And Honestly, some people can have a lot of influence and not realize that's what they're doing. So you've got to be careful. You've mm -hmm. got to say registering the vote is really important. Why? Because your voice matters. Why? Because even though you've been told for decades your vote doesn't matter, the last election, we had more local, state, and federal elections determined by less than 10% of the vote than we have ever had in our history as a country. That is an enormous, enormous validation that your vote matters. So... Right. Just that conversation should only be wrapped around voter registration, not that the, needs to be a meme. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I might I might have one of my my friends work on that. That's that's you know, that's something that's really important because people don't realize, you know, th there's you know, there, there's concern that that, you know, our votes were tampered with. There's concerns that our votes were influenced or colluded against. There's concern. There's more than that, there's more concern that your vote doesn't matter. And if anyone wants to see any evidence that your vote matters, look at how much effort is going on in our government to keep certain folks from voting. That right. tells you that votes matter. So, exactly. you know, when we talk about inducement, your vote matters, have the conversation, but let it stop there because it's so important to make sure that you're being transparent. Absolutely. 100 percent that and i think that 
would just about wrap us up for the evening. <laughs> because that is about <laughs> the, the best note you could end on when you're talking about voter registration. Um, let's see. And we do have a question asking, okay, so this isn't actually about the webinar. This is about 92 County Strategy. So if you would like to, I'm going to put our, if you would like to email us, or go to our website, in92.org. Activist Hour is the first part of the strategy. It's spreading the information and the knowledge, and then we're going to be um, assisting candidates to support issues we support. So you can get involved with that if you'd like. Go to our website and sign up, and we'd be happy to have you. And if I can get my, there it goes. So don't forget, um, 92 County Strategy, we are a political action committee. So if you want to go to in92.org and make a donation today, um, I we would love it. And it helps keep us going and keep us getting to do these kinds of things. Um, oh, you're absolutely welcome for the question and answer there. And then we hope to see you soon. If you have a topic that you would like to cover, if you have an office you would like to cover, if you are with an organization that is dedicated to civic involvement and civic education and you have a topic that you think we could work together on reach out to us let us know we would absolutely love to get together and Jama, i just i cannot thank you enough for doing this for me this was so informative and i think i think people are really going to get a lot out of this when they when they you know those that were with us tonight and then those that look at it later on on our website you can go there and i'll have it uploaded i should have it uploaded tomorrow um and then on YouTube available as well. It's, it's, it really just, it's just good information that everybody should know. This should just be a part of, of high school 101. Right, exactly. And, you know, regarding the League of Women Voters, the name is a misnomer. Um, anybody is welcome. <laughs> bring your husbands, your sons, your friends, bring everybody. Um, they're nonpartisan. They're really passionate about getting everybody voting. They're really passionate about ending gerrymandering, all different things that are really important that end up, help, you know, influencing voters. Um, check them out. Go and to so, the so what's, what's the website? Do you know the website? Um, it is. Um, Lee L W V I N dot org. That's straight off of memory. Okay. So, <laughs> um, but, so L W V I N dot org. That's the yeah. League of Women Voters, Indiana. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And, and, okay. and the cool thing is on our homepage, we got all the stuff that we're talking about in the state house, things that we, you know, we worked to push last legislative ses session, things that we're working on now. Um, find your local chapter. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm over North you know, North Central Indiana, we have chapters in individual cities that are also have chapters in the same county. So there's somebody that you're talking to somewhere in the part of your life that either knows someone or can get you to a meeting or you can get information from. Um, so check it out. It's really important. It's a great organization and they work really hard for voters. And do you know what is to me what I have found that's the nicest thing about working with the nonpartisan nonpartisan organization? What's that? You're working towards the same goal. That that Absolutely. inside discord. I I come from I come from party politics and mm -hmm. coming to 92 and some of the other things I'm doing that are nonpartisan in my life has been one of the best decisions I ever made. Just I stay really active. I'm still really involved. I'm still all about elections and running for office. I just started focusing on it from a different direction and I the absolute best thing is just not constantly fighting with people. You're actually working towards the same goal for the same reasons. And things happen at like lightning speed when right. you're doing There's, that. Exactly. When you remove when you remove the barriers of, well, my party platform is this and your party platform is this and, oh, we're adopt, you know, nothing against libertarians, but they kind of have a little bit of mesh mash between two different ideologies and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you have all of those constraints that your party expects you to work within and then you move to nonpartisan, what it does mm -hmm. is it allows you to bring your passion for ideology, but it brings the work of people working together without constraint. And when you don't have constraint, like you said, things can move. We have coming up <laughs> no less than 10 bills that we're working on just in Indiana. The average state rep in Indiana might work on three bills their whole year. 
So wow. the fact that we have, you know, 10 bills coming up that they're nonpartisan, that they have both sides of the aisle sponsorship, you know, that's so exciting because it kind of cuts through the partisan politics to where that's where the wheels grind to a halt, right? You know, amendments get added and they do it because they know the other side won't vote for it or things happen where, you know, it's purposefully done to bog down the process because they're hoping it doesn't get done this session. Um, when you do right. the things, democracy doesn't work the way it was intended. You know, the voter voice shrinks, you know, it, it, the super delegate voice is elevated and that's a whole different situation. But those things matter to individual voters and a lot of people recognize that. And I think you're gonna see a surge of, you know, League of Women Voters participating. I think that that's gonna become more popular. It was really popular for me when I was really young, um, but it kind of lost its importance. and. I think it's something mm -hmm. that needs to come back. And I think it's something that's going to be really, really good for the state of Indiana and, of course, nationally. Oh, absolutely. I mean, nonpartisan voices dedicated to civic education can never be anything but good. Absolutely. Well, except for absolutely. the people that have something to lose. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's just one step closer to getting to, you know, everybody registered to vote. You know, let's do universal voter registration. Let's get it done automatically. <laughs> All right. Well, Dama, I'm going to have to get off here. It is it is about that time. We've hit 10.02. So I, again, I want to thank you for joining us on Activist Hour tonight. And if you want to come back anytime and go over something, some 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 nonpartisan legislation, something that affects civics, the, the civic process and involvement, please let us know. I know there's a lot of stuff coming up with like driver's licenses and things like that that people need to know about. So if you want to go over that soon, let me know. I, I'll be, I'm scheduling into October right now. So Fantastic. Um, count me in. All right. Well, we will talk to you later. And thanks again, everyone, for joining us tonight. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.